Hey everybody, welcome into Faith and Football. My name is Neil. Welcome into If y'all can't guess, I just watched the Thursday night game, and I think this was an extra flag that was thrown. If y'all watched that game, there was so many flags, I thought that it was National Flag Day. Okay, it was absolutely horrible the officiating in play in this game. It was just flags all over the place. There was no absolutely zero uh, rhythm by either team. Uh, so for those of you who had CeeDee Lamb, Dak Prescott, Malik Neighbors, me, um, Devin Singletary, Jake Ferguson, of course you started all of these players. Um, you probably started Jake Ferguson because he's coming off of injury. And if you had anybody else to tight in, they're probably not doing that well for you. And we're going to be talking on a special note toward the end of this segment on that note of down uh, tight ends and who to pick up off the waiver wire. And this is inspired by a special guest. Uh, he's not going to be on, but he did comment on my last video and asked for some help. My boy, Bryce. Uh, I've been playing uh, fantasy football with Bryce for quite a while. Uh, he had decided to bow out of the Zia League because he is actually wrapped up with, I believe, three different leagues. And he's struggling at tight end in all of them. And if you were one of the ones who went after a top five tight end, you're probably in the same boat. So stay tuned toward the end and we'll answer some of the questions about guys who are possibly on your waiver wire that you can go pick up not only for this week, but for the rest of the season. So today, like I said, we're talking about start sets, and we're going to go into a few reminders that you need to be aware of at this particular time in the season. But what I want to uh, touch on today, there's been a lot of trading in my league, which I'm absolutely ecstatic to see because I love trading. I love that enthusiasm and you know, to trying to make your team better week in and week out. Now, just because you're not trading doesn't mean you're not trying to make your team better. It just means that you're happy with what you got and you're going to let it ride a little bit. But I want to talk a little bit about how to get deals done. And it's coincides with what kind of relationship we have with Jesus Christ. What kind of relationship does God want with you? Well, he doesn't want a Facebook relationship. He doesn't want to, you know, I'll, I'll text you and, you know, then leave it unread and things like that. He doesn't want that kind of distant relationship that we in this time frame, uh, in this world, are used to. We're used to Facebook friends. We're used to people that, you know, that we can Zoom with, we can interact with online. But when it comes to a real, like, down-to-earth personal relationship very few of us have those today in our lives and i'm not really trying to place blame anywhere i'm just trying to bring an awareness that just because you've got this doesn't mean you have friends it just means that you know people that's it but when it comes to actually knowing people and being able to make a personal connection you got to get face to face with them. Look, I know that I might be sounding you know, a little bit of my age, but it's true. Even today, when you want to get really big deals done, you meet face to face. You make that extra effort to show someone that they're worth your time, that you're concerned about them. You don't just call them up. You just don't text them. You make it a point to get face to face with them. That's what God is looking for. He's looking for that face-to-face -face time. So how much are you spending with God in quiet time? And look, I know it's hard. I know it's a difficult ask. We've got so many things that are vying for our attention, family, job, uh, finances. Everything is going on, and we find it difficult to set time aside for probably, well, not probably, definitely the most important thing that we need to have time set aside for, and that's our relationship with Jesus Christ. So in Matthew 
chapter uh, 22, verse 37 and 39 through 40, it reads as this. It says, Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And the second is like it, and this was when they were asking Jesus, what is the greatest commandment? And he said, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, and all your soul. And he says that the second is like the first. Love your neighbor as yourself. And the law and the prophets, all the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. So that's how much Jesus put into, put an emphasis on personal relationship is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and to love your neighbor as yourself. So when we're going about our day to day, you know, we really need to make sure that we're making that personal connection, that we're taking time for each other. So in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 and 25, it says, and let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. So it's talking about making sure that we're not neglecting the gathering together of ourselves. That's why church is so important and that fellowship with fellow believers is so important is to get out of the house. Can you have a personal relationship with God and not be in contact with people? Sure. You can have a close personal relationship with God, but the thing is, that's not how God created us. He didn't create us to just stay at home and, you know, YouTube uh, pastors and YouTube sermons and all that kind of stuff. He charged us to go out and make disciples of the world. So, just at, just like it's easier to get deals done in person rather than via text, it's also easier to encourage one another face-to-face. -face. And that's what God wants, is a close personal relationship with us. So I ask you today that when you are trying to get when you're trying to get deals done and you're trying to trade, this is one of the things that I found out earlier this week. I actually pulled the trade that there was no way I was getting this done over text through the lead chat. This was a face-to-face. -face. I had to see the person that I'm trying to trade with. I had to look into their eyes. I had to hear the tone of their voice to find out where their mind was, what they were looking for. And you're not going to get that over a text message. So if you are playing in, and I know it's not always possible, but if you're playing in the league with, you know, people that you work with, people that are friends of yours, people that you hang out with on occasion or on a regular basis, make sure that you're continuing that fellowship and not just in fantasy football, but in life in general. So something to keep in mind as you're going through your league, make sure that you're making that personal connection. You know, if you want a deal done, there's nobody wants to deal with somebody they don't like. I mean, do you really want to deal with a guy who's being kind of a jerk to you? No, you really don't. The guy who's not taking time for you, you know, the guy who's kind of like just using you. That's not what you want. You don't want to deal with those people. Okay. Can you love them? Sure. But you really aren't going to go out of your way to get a deal done with them. So make sure that you're continuing that fellowship, continuing that that brotherhood and going in and finding out about people. Okay. Fantasy football is a great place to know people, to learn about people, to get to know people and who they truly are. Just the same way that going to church and fellowshipping with fellow believers is a great way to make that personal connection. So find yourself a good church, just the way that you found yourself a good league and make those connections. So 
We're going into week four. Now, some of you may be panicking. Some of you may be sitting at 0-3, 1-2, and, and, and you're like, man, I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. I don't know, you know, do, do I blow my team up? Do I try to trade off my best player to try to get some mediocre ones that, you know, try to fill in blanks and stuff like that? Maybe you're dealing with a lot of injuries. Look, we're all dealing with the same league. Okay, we're all dealing with the NFL. And how we how we navigate this is very uh, individualistic. Okay. We all have different strategies. I'm here to help out. So if you've got a certain strategy, if you built your team a certain way, maybe that's not working out for you. Maybe you went wide receiver heavy and Debo's hurt. Cooper Cup is hurt. Puka Naku is out. Uh, Devontae Smith just got a concussion. So, like, you're dealing with a lot of stuff. And for those of you who had Malik Neighbors tonight, he had been diagnosed with a concussion. So, thankfully, he doesn't have to play again for about another 10 days, if I'm not mistaken, before he goes up against Seattle. So, that's great. He gets an early game. He gets a really long week to recover. And hopefully, our prayers are with Malik Neighbors hoping that he or praying that he can recover and be cleared before next Sunday's uh, contest with Seattle Seahawks. So something to keep in mind, I want you guys to make sure that on Friday and Saturday, more than likely Friday, when the final injury reports come out from camp, that you're paying attention because some of these guys have popped up on the, uh, on the injury reports that weren't on there before. So make sure that you're checking your, uh, your apps. Uh, Sleep is real good about updating. And if you have not downloaded the fantasy pros app, I strongly encourage you to download my playbook from the fantasy pros. So like right now I have a notification on there um, from uh, my playbook informing me about a late concussion suffered by Malik Neighbors. Now, I watched the game, so I already knew that, but it's only about 20 minutes after the game, and I'm getting that information. So, they're like I said, they're really good about updating you and letting you know about those things. So, make sure you have all of the apps downloaded that can help you out, including the most important app that can help you out. It's called Version. Go download it. You won't be sorry. And uh, hit me up when you figure out what that is. So you version, make sure you download it. And uh, that is the most helpful uh, app that you will ever download. Trust me on this one. So my start sets for this week. Now, my start sets episode are, I'm, I'm trying to keep them a little condensed uh, so we don't go over too much. So bear with me. Um, Andy Dalton, yes, the Red Rifle is back. He is in Carolina, and he's going up against Cincinnati. Guys, if there was ever a revenge game narrative, this is it. Andy Dalton comes back with Dave Canales and the Carolina Panthers to face Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati Bengals. Listen, there are... Cincinnati's defense is horrible. Carolina's defense is horrible. I want pieces of this game, whatever they are. Um, Andre Yoshivas, I want him as a receiver. I want Mike Gesicki at tight end. I'll, if you've got Jamar Chase, you already know you're starting him. you got Chuba Hubbard. You can throw him in there now. He was fantastic last week with Andy Dalton under center. I tried – to hold on to Deontay Johnson, but I did make a trade. Trust me on this one. I got the better end of this deal, but it breaks my heart that I wasn't able to hold on to Deontay Johnson just a little bit longer to see Andy Dalton light him up with targets and points, and it was fabulous. Thankfully, he was on the opponent's bench, so I was good to go. Um. This week, the guy that I actually traded him to, yeah, I'm facing him this week, and I'm praying to God that 
doesn't watch this episode, but he's he's pretty much stacked at wide receiver anyway, so he would have to be making some pretty hard decisions to get Deontay Johnson into the lineup. Now, Adam Thielen's out, and a sneaky start this week could be Xavier Leggett, rookie wide receiver for the Carolina Panthers. Now, he is not on my starts of the week, but he is a deep sleeper start if you need one, okay? And you guys know what time is. That's right. We're talking about Zia Rotisserie Bar at 235 Ducey Road, Lafayette, Louisiana. If you guys are in town, please stop by. Make sure down bottom that you have subscribed, that you, after you do the share and the you know, the notification, smash notification button, and you like this video, make sure that you're going to Zia if you're hungry down in Lafayette and you show them proof that you subscribe to this channel. You can get any appetizer of your choice for the table on me from them. Look, guys, hummus, the ancho shrimp, the Asian almond shrimp. If you guys want to take the ribs for a spin before you dive into the entree, they got the four bone, they got the six bone. You can get the Thai ribs, barbecue, dry rub, whatever you want to get. They are all delicious. Trust me on this one. Uh, they are new teeth approved. Okay, so make sure you go down there. Let them know that you are subscribed to my channel and we will get you your choice of appetizer. You want the Mad Hummus? Take it from my production staff, my beautiful wife, Amanda, and the hummus is out of this world. The uh, Mediterranean hummus. Get that. If you don't want all those toppings, get the garlic. It's fine. I'm not going to blame you for it, but I do recommend the Met hummus highly. Go down and check them out. And if you talk to my boys, they are definitely in love with the duck empanadas. So if you want to go down there and check them out, be my guest. And the, the proof of subscription is your ticket to that. Uh, free appetizer on me. If you are in the Lafayette, Louisiana area and you need catering done, they will handle that too. Give them a call 337-406-0013 and be sure to mention that you subscribe to my channel. Talk to Andy or whoever's going to help you out with that um, and they will hook you up with some awesome catering food for whatever event you have. Maybe you're throwing a birthday party, maybe you're doing a corporate event. They can handle it all Check them out, Zia Rotisserie Bar in Lafayette, Louisiana, 235 Ducey Road, Lafayette, Louisiana. So we're going on to my second start of the week. Now, this one's going to be a little deep, guys. This one's, you, you're going to have to brace yourself for this one. I know he's been bad. I know he hasn't been living up to expectation. But Caleb Williams versus the Rams, look. The Rams' off uh, defense is absolutely horrendous, and Caleb Williams may have just turned that that corner that we've been waiting for. So, if you are in need, if you're struggling at quarterback, then go ahead, plug in Caleb Williams. This is a this could be a continuation get right game against the Rams. They gave up a ton of points last week uh, to the 49ers, and Brock Purdy looked outstanding. Now, I get his Brock Purdy, but I tell you right now, Caleb Williams was looking good last week. He found DJ Moore. He found Roma Dunstan. He made Clo uh, Cole Komet come alive. Make sure that you are plugging him in to your lineup if you are struggling at quarterback if he's been riding your bench go ahead plug him in uh now if you have questions down below in the comment section leave me your start sit question and i will be sure to get to you before game start on sunday and like i said if you had thursday night games you knew who you were starting there was no question so you know you were starting neighbors prescott lamb you knew you were starting those guys. Um, Rico Dottle did well today. Um, he was a good flex option um, along with uh, Devin Singletary. D 
did okay. I am not sold on Devin Singletary, just as a point of reference. If you can trade him away, please do so. Just make sure you watch out what you're getting, all right? So, starting at running back. Now, this is when you're going to have to watch the injury report. Jalen Warren is supposed to not play this week. Now, Arthur Smith is the new offensive coordinator for the Steelers. If you remember, he was the offensive or the head coach for the Atlanta Falcons and absolutely tanked not only B. John Robinson, but Kyle Pitts and Drake London with all the little gadgets, all the little, you know, uh, cursory players that are that were down there, uh, John U. Smith and Cordell Patterson. Ironically, Cordell Patterson now plays, you guessed it, for the Pittsburgh Steelers. So with Jalen Warren out, Najee did was seen after the game Sunday with a with his arm in a sling. That is not on the injury report. So keep an eye out for Jalen Warren's injury status. And if Jalen Warren is out, go ahead and fire up Najee Harris. This week against Indy. Look, Indy's defense is bottom of the barrel against the run. Make sure that you're lighting them up with Najee Harris. You will have to worry about a little bit about Cordell Patterson stealing a little something. If you're in a deeper league, I do recommend that you go out and add Cordell Patterson as I did right now. Because if not only Jalen Warren misses this week and possibly future weeks, but if Najee Harris gets hurt, Cordell Patterson takes over the lion's share of the rushing attempts in Pittsburgh. And we all know how Mike Tomlin loves to run the ball. And he's got an offensive coordinator whose first name should be changed from Arthur to Ron Smith. So next up, and this is going to be a little deep, guys. Carson Steele against the Chargers. Look, I saw this kid last week. He looks sharp. They're giving him a ton of looks. Yes, Kareem Hunt's going to be back. But before Kareem Hunt gets up and going, and look, he didn't look that great last time that we saw Kareem Hunt on the football field. And CEH, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, should not be a factor this week. It might be next week. So this might be your last chance to use Carson Steele in a flex capacity. So if you're hurting it at uh, running back, go ahead, plug Carson Steele in. If you need some points, he is definitely going to be a, not just a gadget player, but getting the lion's share of the uh, running back work for Kansas city this week against the chargers chargers defense. Not what it used to be. So there's your quarterback. There's your running back. And before we get into wide receiver, of course, you know, I got to mention my favorite sponsor, sweetest one, my boy, Dusty Shores down at Keller's Bakery in Youngsville, 627 Lafayette Street, down in Youngsville, Louisiana. Make sure that you go down and check them out. If you're passing through and you've always wondered what a king cake is, maybe you've heard about it. You're watching some documentary about Mardi Gras and you heard about this king cake thing. And it's not Mardi Gras season, but you want one. And even if you're in the area and you just got that hankering for a king cake, guess what? Yes, Keller's Bakery will hook you up with a king cake, even though it is not Mardi Gras season. Go down there, check them out. Say hi to Dusty. Oh, and by the way, if you show them that you subscribe to this channel, just the same way as Zia, you get two free cookies of your choice from uh, Keller's Bakery, no purchase necessary. How sweet is that deal? Look, I try to hook you guys up the best I can. You guys know I don't get paid for this, so um, I do what I can when I can. So make sure you go down there and check them out. They're open Tuesday through Saturday, 6 a.m. to 3 p.m. down at 627 Lafayette Street in Youngsville, Louisiana. Make sure you go down there and check them out and tell them that you Heard about them from me. I pick up these two free cookies and look, just because you don't have to buy anything, doesn't mean you don't have to. I mean, it's a bakery. They got donuts. 
Donuts are delicious. Come on, pick up a dozen. It'll be okay. Oh, and the pies? I don't get any other pie for Thanksgiving unless it comes from Keller's Bakery. Trust me on this one. Past, I think, four years, no pie has graced my Thanksgiving Day table unless it comes from Keller's Bakery. So if you're looking, you know, a little ahead, I know we're only in September and we're, you know, we're fixing to hit October, but Thanksgiving's right around the corner, guys. You got to make plans. So make sure that you keep Keller's Bakery in mind for your holiday needs as well. And look, I don't, don't tell me nothing about bringing up holidays early. I think Hobby Lobby's had Christmas stuff out since August. So, wide receiver for start this week. Some of you may have been sitting on this guy wondering if they're ever going to use him. Will the quarterback ever turn that corner? And he did. Last week, Caleb Williams. That's right. I'm talking about Roma Doomsday. Look, this rookie with a rookie, they got a connection, guys. They're working this. This could be the start of something awesome for fantasy football for the foreseeable future. You always want your number one pick, a uh, wide receiver, to have that good relationship, that good connection with your rookie quarterback. They're coming at the same time. They're learning at the same time. They're growing at the same time, and they're growing together, guys. So that blow-up coming out party for Roma Doomsday, I believe, continues this week against the Rams. Look, I already said it when I talked about Caleb Williams. The Rams gave up a ton of points last week. If you remember a guy named, oh, I don't know, Jawan Jennings, this dude scored almost 50 points. He had, like, I think over 150 yards and three touchdowns outstanding so if he can do that i think roma doomsday could get let's just say 75 and one that's a good day so check him out roma doomsday put it down start fire him up if you need a fill in maybe you have cup maybe you got puka maybe you had debo and you need a filler maybe you're unhappy with brandon Ayuk, and you want to sit him until he shows you something until he turns that corner Tell he has a plus matchup. Whatever the case may be, Roma Doomsday is your guy. If you're sitting on him, go ahead and plug him in. Next guy up, Jalen Naylor, wide receiver for the Minnesota Vikings. Going up against the Packers this week. Uh, look, guys, Jalen Naylor is a little deeper. Uh, Jordan Addison is, is supposed to come back this week. So, he may take a little bit of a hit, but this is definitely a guy worth stashing on your roster. And this week, go ahead and plug him in because he's got that connection with Sam Darnold. Sam Darnold likes this guy. He's got Justin Jefferson. You know that the Packers are going to be paying attention to Justin Jefferson. So Jalen Naylor's got single coverage all game long. And this game could be a shootout. You saw what uh, Malik Willis did last week for the Packers. You've seen what Sam Darnold has been doing all year for the Vikings. So this game could get out of control quick. And I definitely want a piece of that action. Now, going into quarterbacks for the sit category. Yes, we're talking sit. Some of you aren't going to be happy. Some of you haven't been happy. Mr. Anthony Richardson, Mr. I broke all records at the Combine. I was supposed to break fantasy football. Guys, this dude has not been good. He's been horrible. And I, I've said it in past episodes. I'll say it again in case you're just tuning in. And remember, if you're just tuning in, down at the bottom, subscribe, like, share, and make sure that you take advantage of all of the freebies that you can get for being a part of the subscription to this channel, Anthony Richardson has not played but 17 games between high school and the NFL. Guys, that's just a season of college football. That's horrible. Jaden Daniels with Washington. My boy was awesome last week. Why? 
He had five years worth of experience in college. He played 77 college games. He had some experience. He knew how to read defenses. He knows what's going on. Anthony Richardson is still learning. Not saying that he's not going to be a great quarterback, but right now, you need to sit him down until he shows you something. Now, if you've got Michael Pittman, if you got Alec Pierce, hold on to him. Okay. I'm telling you right now, if it's a I know it's a big if, but if Anthony Richardson does get either hurt or benched, the man behind him is Joe Flacco. Ask all the Amari Cooper owners last year how much Joe Flacco meant to Amari Cooper when he finally took control of the team. It was a playoff run for the Browns. Now he's in Indianapolis sitting behind Anthony Richardson, just waiting for another shot to take a team from worst to the playoffs. Indy hasn't been good. Are they going to stick with Anthony Richardson? I don't know. But I know Alec Pierce has been good. Michael Pittman, I'll tell you right now, you might be able to get out from underneath of him with the name cachet that he holds and somebody willing to give up. But that's a big ask. So if you've got a trade package that you want to talk about down below, leave me a comment. Let me know what, what was going on with it, okay? Next up, I know this guy was lights out last week. But Brock Purdy against the Pats. Look, the guys, it's the Pats. I mean, the, the Patriots have a surprisingly good defense this year. I didn't think they were going to be that good. But Gerard Mayo has these guys on point. If you have questions about Brock Purdy, look, Debo, he's not coming back. Well, not coming back this week. Kittle. May or may not be there. Brandon Ayuk does not look good, and you can't expect Jawan Jennings to carry everything. Now, in that same sentence, I will tell you that I'm expecting big things out of Jordan Mason, simply because I don't think that the Patriots are that good against the run. So, take it for what it's worth. If you have questions down below, ask them. I'd be more than happy to help you out. Now, one guy that you might want to talk, at least run it up the flagpole and see if anybody salutes type thing. Think about trading away Patrick Mahomes. Now, this is not my take. I listen to the ballers religiously. I am a member of the Foot Clan proudly. They were talking earlier on an episode this week about trading away Patrick Mahomes. You could get a haul. He carries a lot of weight. He is probably one of the best, if not the best quarterback in the NFL. But for fantasy football, right now on Sleeper, he is the quarterback 13. That means that there are 12 other guys who are better than he is. And Sam Darnold is one of them. Guys, Sam Darnold, Derek Carr, better than Patrick Mahomes? Now, you know that's not true. But when it comes to fantasy, this guy's going to sink your team. He doesn't have the weapons that he used to have. He doesn't have Tyreek Hill. Travis Kelsey has not been playing well, and they're not going to be expending him anytime soon. These guys are playing real football, not fantasy. These guys are focused on a three-peat in the Super Bowl. They're going to be holding Kelsey for a Super Bowl run. They are 3-0 and doing exactly what they've been doing. They're not going to change. They have a, a mismatched hodgepodge backfield right now with Isaiah Pachenko on IR. Guys, you're talking about CH, Carson Steele, Kareem Hunt. I mean, who else are they going to pull out? I mean, Dalvin Cook already signed with the – Cowboys, so he's out. I mean, what are they going to do? Bring Ray Rice back? I mean, come on. Patrick Mahomes doesn't need to be a top-notch fantasy quarterback in order to win. What you guys need is somebody like Sam Darnold who needs to prove himself to get another job or at least get a big contract. 
because he knows that J.J. McCarthy is taking over next year. So that's what you're looking for. If you are struggling right now at, at running back, at wide receiver, at tight end, go get you a haul and try to trade for, I don't know, Jordan Love that's going to be coming back. Okay? Matter of fact, I'll tell you what. Right now, let me look. I'm looking right now on Sleeper at the leaders at quarterback. Now, if you guys don't think that you could go out and trade, Pat, let's just say we trade Patrick Mahomes for Jalen Hurts. You trade Patrick Mahomes for Brock Purdy. Geno Smith, right now in one of my leagues, is on the waiver wire. He is the number nine quarterback in fantasy right now. And looking at his game log, He's got a lot of green coming up. And if you guys don't know what the green means, the green means plus matchups. He's got Detroit in week four, San Fran in week six, Atlanta in week seven, the Rams in week nine, and then right after the bye, San Fran again in Arizona. And then Arizona again right before the playoffs start in week 14. Guys, go get Geno, okay? If you've got Patrick Mahomes, go pick up Geno Smith. If he's on your waiver wire, trade Patrick Mahomes for a quarterback or a running back and a wide receiver or a wide receiver and a tight end. Go try to see if you can package deals and get one of these top flight uh, tight ends that everybody's frustrated with. Maybe not Sam Laporta because he's dinged up. Maybe not Kelsey because of what I just said, but Kyle Pitts. Matter of fact, let me see. Now, I wouldn't say Dallas Goddard, but I know that Trey McBride is dealing with concussion. George Kittle deals with injury. So people are hurting. But I'll tell you right now, Mike Gesicki is somebody we're going to be talking about here in just a minute. So that's my thoughts via the fantasy footballers. Thank you guys very much for the insight. I greatly appreciate it. And if you are not, a member of the Foot Clan, I I strongly advise that you go for it. Their tools and tricks and trades and stuff are awesome. They are out of this world, and they help you so much in making decisions on trades, start sets. It's just it's phenomenal, the work that those guys have done over there. So I thank you all very much, and I encourage all of my viewership to definitely be a member of the Foot Clan or at least subscribe to the Fantasy Footballers over on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts from. So next up, running backs. J.K. Dobbins. Look, guys, if you've been riding the J.K. train, it's coming into a station and you need to hop off, okay? J.K. was phenomenal. Trust me, I rode that train for the first couple of weeks, and I recently traded him, got out from underneath of him, and I was able to get Ramondre Stevenson for him. Now, I believe in Ramondre Stevenson. I know he didn't do that well last week, but I know that I'm happier with Ramondre Stevenson and that the age than I am with the age and uh, health past, uh, health history, of J.K. Dobbins. This guy's had multiple knee operations, come back from multiple ligaments torn. So I am getting out while the getting is good and I can get something for him. Plus, before he runs into all the mess that he's about to face, because he's about to face the Chiefs. It's not good this week. Get out. And Justin Herbert is dinged up. So he's like one hit away from being out. And you're looking at Taylor Heineke as his backup. And you know that once Tyler, Tyler Heineke, uh, Taylor Heineke is under center, they're doing nothing but run the ball. So next up, Zach Charbonnet. Guys, I love Zach Charbonnet last week. This week, he's a set for me against Detroit. Their defensive line is absolutely phenomenal against the run. So I would set Zach Charbonnet. Next up, Anybody that starts with Miami. Okay. 
Now, I know I already went over running backs, but I'm going to throw A-Chain in there with this. Waddle and Hill against the Titans. The Titans are no joke when it comes to defense, guys. Take my word for it, okay? I have Jalen Waddle in one league. I got a buddy of mine that's got uh, Hill. I'm telling them to hold on to him because I want to see what uh, uh, Taylor uh, Hudley does this week with this offense. Okay. He is going to be the new backup above Tim Boyle and neither one are good. Now I did like uh, Huntley when he was in uh, Baltimore with the Ravens and took over for Lamar. This guy, he will pull it down and run in a heartbeat. He's got a decent arm, but I don't know how much of this offense will run or how this defense or offense will run with him under center in the first week. Now, maybe next week after I see, you know, what he's done, cool, fire up Waddle, fire up Hill, I'm down. And I'm looking for Miami to at least make some kind of trade. There has been rumor about trying to trade uh, for Flacco, to try to trade for Jameis, to try to trade for Russell Wilson, all those guys to head down to South Beach to take over while Tua makes a decision about his future. Personally, I think that he should retire, but that's me. Now, next up, I talked about these guys a little earlier. Michael Pittman, Alex Pierce. Look, guys, I know that Alex Pierce had some phenomenal games. He got a couple of deep bombs, but that's all that Anthony Richardson does. And they're playing Pittsburgh. They're going to control the ball. They're not going to get that many shots. And I don't see Anthony Richardson being able to throw that well while he's laying on his back. So he, if I'm not mistaken, something like 13 sacks he's taking. He, Indianapolis like leads the league in sacks. It's either them or Chicago, one or the other. But absolutely abysmal for this upcoming matchup against Pittsburgh. So make sure that you're benching Michael Pittman, Alex Pierce, and if you can, trade them away. So. That is my start set for week four. Now, I do want to show you guys real quick. Let's see. Here we go. So this is the comment left by my buddy Bryce. He says, I am struggling with tight end position like most people. I currently have Laporta. Looking at Najoku or Conklin, also looking at Laporta's backup. Well, here's the thing. I would not take Laporta's backup uh, just for the simple fact that there are way too many other weapons in Detroit. And Laporta's one of a kind. So you're not going to get the same production in a backup as you would with Laporta. Now, Najoku and Conklin are starters. Those guys are proven commodities. Now. This week, Conklin has the better matchup. And ironically, from now until the end of the regular season, or actually through the playoffs in Super Bowl Week 17, Conklin and Njoku both have top five rest of season matchups at the tight end position. So you could take either one. Personally, I would go with Conklin just because you already know the quarterback situation with the Jets. You already know that Aaron Rodgers loves him some tight ends. He's an older quarterback. He's not going to be throwing the ball downfield like he used to with Devontae Adams back in Green Bay. So that safety valve at tight end is going to be magical for Aaron Rodgers and the Jets. And this week, they have a absolutely fabulous matchup. Uh, let me see. Sorry, I'm on the wrong thing, guys. They're facing Denver this week. 
Uh, so Denver is the 20, 20th ranked opponent against the tight end position, which is absolutely awesome. It's the they're the bottom third of the league in uh facing the tight end position. So definitely if Conklin is available on your waiver wire, he's not everywhere. But for those of you who he is, go out and pick up Tyler Conklin um and add him to your roster. Now some of the guys that are out there, uh Fryermuth may have hit your waiver wire like he did in one of my leagues. Um Mike Gasicki, if he is on your waiver wire, they are facing Carolina. So, hey, take that shot. I want some of that game. It's going to be high scoring. And if T. Higgins gets dinged up again, then Gasicki's just going to get more looks along with Andre Yoshivas, uh, wide receiver for rookie wide receiver for the Bengals. So, Bryce, I hope that answered your question. I appreciate the comment. And, guys, make sure down below that if you have questions, you're leaving me comments, and I will be more than happy to take care of all of your start sets. Or if you have any scriptural questions, hit me up. I'd love to have a conversation with anybody about scripture as well. So, until next time, I wish you guys luck. And I do want to remind you all, bye weeks are coming up week five starts the bye week so make sure that you're checking your future uh line your future matchups and making sure that you are making the adjustments accordingly uh don't be caught off guard plan a week in ahead go to when you go on sleeper and it says week whatever like right now let's say week four go to team where it says week four Click the arrow moving forward and go to week five. See who you're going to have out and make the adjustment now. Before your, your roster's locked, before your waiver's locked, and you have to wait for waivers to run, go pick up guys who you're going to need to replace the players that are going to be missing from your lineup in week five. Veteran tip from me to you guys. Uh, also, Next week, October 6th, is going to be uh, our first London game. Very early game. This is like a 7 a.m., 6.30 a.m., something like that start. It's going to be Jets versus Vikings. So there's going to be a lot of fantasy implications in this one. Uh, Braylon Allen, Briggs Hall, uh, the aforementioned Tyler Conklin, Sam Darnold, Justin Jefferson, just to name a few. Make sure that you have those players locked up in your position uh, spots, not in your flex. That way, if something pops off later in the e later in the evening or later that day or even Monday night, you are able to make adjustments accordingly and not caught with your pants down and having to worry about specific uh, position players like needing to pick just a running back or just a wide receiver. If they are not in your flex and you get something messed up with uh, injuries late or late scratch, what have you, if they, if you have a flex spot open, then you can make those adjustments. Okay. So make sure that you're setting your lineups correctly, that you're looking ahead as we start our bye weeks. And when we do face a bipocalypse, trust me, I will be doing a, uh, an episode on that as well and how to handle that. So guys, till next time, my name is Neil. And remember, football is great, but God is greater. And we will see you guys next time on Faith in Football. Take care. God bless.